loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about signs of soulmate and twin flame connections within the astrology chart, specifically the synastry chart. Now, I want to give a little quiet disclaimer before I get started that there are controversial ideas and theories when it comes to soulmates and twin flames and life partners. Um, so everyone kind of has a different theory when it comes to that and different belief systems when it comes to that, what a soulmate is and what a twin flame is, myself included. So if you would like to hear me talk about soulmates versus twin flames versus life partners versus true love, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up or leave it down in the comments below and I'm more than happy to share my theories and my experiences with that and also my research. But when it comes to this video and what we're gonna be talking about today, when I'm referring to soulmates and twin flames, what I'm referring to is those deep connections, those deep, intimate love relationship connections specifically. And the reason why I'm clarifying that before I dive into this even further is because I feel like that is the best way to describe what I'm talking about in this video, which is that intimate, loving relationship that we just feel on such a divinely profound level. Call it whatever you want, this is what I'm calling it today, is the soulmate connection. The next thing that I wanna mention is is why you should actually listen to me when it comes to relationships, soulmates, and twin flames within the astrology chart. Now, years ago, almost 12 years to be exact, and I know I look good, I know I look young, and you guys can't believe that I've been studying astrology for over 12 years, believe it or not. <laughs> but years ago, when I started astrology, one of the main things that propelled my thirst and search for accumulating knowledge was understanding the special dynamic between people and then the, the, the magic of a intimate relationship and then also finding that person for myself and for my friends and for my family. I don't want to say that I was obsessed with accumulating this knowledge but I was very thorough and aggressive <laughs> for a very long time with my research to the point where I would stay up until 3-4 four, five, six, seven a.m. every day and just be studying, diving into this and only go to bed in, because I needed to as a physical human being, I needed to sleep and I woke up and well, I fell asleep just so I could wake up and dive into my studies again and I was like this for a good two or three years of studying synastry charts, composite charts and the dynamic, like marriage partners, people is that we would naturally gravitate towards and the health and the vitality of the marriage relationship. So I wanna say that with astrology, we're, we are always learning, even the gurus of astrology can always learn from each other so that we're always accumulating information. But in this video, I wanna show and share with you some of these really important connections that you can look for in your chart, specifically your synastry chart, when it comes to a connection between you and another person. Now that I've said that, I also feel like it's very important for me to mention that I'm talking about specifically synastry charts, which means that there are two people that have already met and are already have a, a relationship in existence. Whether it be a brand new relationship, meaning they're meeting for the first day, or it's a relationship that's been going on for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. So in order for you to benefit from this video, you would need to have met someone and then pull their chart up. You can do this for yourself, but also keep in mind that you are more than just these five common situations that show up, these five common aspects that show up within your astrology and your synastry chart. And everyone's synastry chart dynamic is so different and so unique, and that's what makes the relationship so phenomenal and so different. That's why it's really beneficial sometimes to kind of reach out to an astrologer to help you to understand the dynamic between you and that partner. Just make sure that that astrologer knows what it is that they're talking about. And if you need an astrologer, of course, I'm always here for you. The links for my services are down below. Well, let's go ahead and dive into the exciting part, and that is relationships, synastries, and the five common themes that I see and astrologers across the board see when it comes to significant soulmate connection relationships. The first one for me is the most obvious, and that is connections to the vertex point. This is one of my favorite things to look out for when, as soon as I pull a synastry chart, unless there's certain aspects that kind of draw my attention. You guys know that when I'm pulling charts, not only am I looking at the angles of the planets and 
many aspects of the planets, but I work with my intuition and I allow my intuition to guide me throughout the process because that opens up the door for me to receive additional messages that I like to give to my clients. But the, ver the vertex point is one of the first things that I look for, hands down, next to the sun and the moon. So the vertex point is an angle that was created with math calculations in order to determine faded encounters and faded moments in a person's life. The math to find the vertex point is so freaking complex but there's many calculators on the internet that you can use in order to find this point specifically within your chart, but it's kind of considered the second descendant. What the descendant is, is um, the cusp of the seventh house, which rules your relationships, your marriage partners. So the seventh house rules your marriage partners and also your enemy, but sometimes the seventh house, the person that you end up marrying is not always your soulmate, your twin flame, and we see this a lot. The vertex point is the point that is calculated in order to find um, the trigger, the angle that gets triggered when something meaningful and significant happens within your life. That is connected to fate. So this is the point that we as astrologers look towards when something happens that creates a significant relationship to enter into your life. So when I'm working on a solar return chart or a lunar return chart, or I'm working on transit charts for my clients, and they ask, you know what, Jess, am I gonna find love this year? Or do you see this happening for me for this month? Or Jess, I met Jake at such and such time on such and such day. Since we've met, it's, it's really changed my life. Is there something that happened? Do you see this as my soulmate? Do you see this as my twin flame? Was there something that was triggered? I'd be like, well, the first thing I wanna look towards is the vertex point. And for really important, significant relationships, that point is always being aspected. I honestly don't think that in my years of working with astrology with my clients that I have found a person enter someone's life that wasn't signif that was significant that didn't have a vertex encounter in some way shape or form when it comes to the personal planets and when i say personal planets what I'm, what i'm talking about is the sun the moon venus mars and mercury so when you're looking at the sinistry chart you want to look to see if the vertex point that angle has been aspected. You want to see if it's being aspected by one of the personal planets, the planets that it is that I just mentioned, number one. And number two, you wanna make sure that it's one of the, um, the seventh house ruler. So the seventh house is connected to the marriage partner or the fifth house ruler, so dating, or the eighth house ruler, which is connected to intimacy, is aspecting the vertex point. So let's say I pull that chart and you have Cancer as your ascendant, which means that Capricorn is your descendant. So Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So if Saturn is falling in a position where the vertex point is being aspected, then you're most likely, and it's like, a really strong chance that there's a significant encounter that can happen for you that year within the solar return chart. The same thing is true within a synastry chart. You wanna make sure that your seventh house ruler, your seventh, your fifth, or your eighth house ruler is aspecting the other person's vertex and vice versa. That is one way that you'll see a really strong uh, chemistry connection and a lot of times you kind of feel it right away the next sign that you'll see and this is something else that you'll feel right away is Sun and, and moon uh, connection so the Sun represents our ego and the moon represents our emotions and emotions are so important when it comes to synastry charts because it shows how well you kind of initially meet and mingle with a person now when I talk about sun and moon connections it's commonly believed that a sun and a moon connection especially the conjunction is a strong indicator of a soulmate relationship but I have to tell you that that is not the case at all I have to debunk that immediately I think that that's one of those things that just kind of circulated around the internet and people just took it and ran with it because it's so prevalent like we see it a lot within the chart and the reason why we see it so often is because the Sun moves really quickly and the moon moves even faster so there's a higher chance for those two to come together and what happens is that when they come together the Sun and the moon when they meet together in that way whether it be in a conjunction 
or an opposition, a square, a trine, or a sextile, we feel an instant kind of affinity towards that person, which can make a person say certain things like, hey Jess, um, when I met this person, I instantly saw them as a friend or I instantly recognized them as a good person and to me, it was like love at first sight. In reality, that's just the sun and the moon making their connections which means that the ego of the person and the, the core of that person met and merged in a way that was impactful and you feel it with their emotional well-being so it's something that is really hard to ignore but just because those that, that feeling is there does not indicate that that person is a soulmate or a twin flame relationship however that being said if you have these other indicators around it meaning like the vertex point and the north node and other things that it is that I'll mention when you have those aspects merging with that you really have a really special type of relationship and that's why I wanted to talk about it today and that's why I wanted to mention in this video because it's one of the top in my opinion it's one of the top indicators of a pleasant relationship that kind of develops where you like meet them and you're like oh my god I like you and then it merges into love depending on the rest of the chart now the next point that I want to talk about that I look at in a sinistry chart when it comes to significant relationships is the north node now or the south node because they're, the north node is here, the south node is directly opposing it, so if the north node is being aspected and the south node is definitely being aspected, but that's neither here nor there, moving forward. The north node shows uh, karma. It shows things that are going to happen in your life that are going to pull you for your greatest well-being, your greatest good. Now when it comes to relationships that pull you and that's what soulmates kind of do and sometimes even twin flames but more more often than not it's the soulmate relationship that pulls you towards le learning and being better and striving for your soul's evolution the north node is the one that gets aspected now i have to say again that soulmate relationships are not easy in fact they tend to be the most difficult and complex and even in my own experience, when I have been working with setting intention and calling in my soulmate, it is my soulmate that I have been meeting every single time, like these soulmate relationships, and knowing fully well that the relationship that it was that I was calling in was not going to be my life partner or my twin flame or my marriage partner, but it's the person who is going to teach me the most about myself and how to love another person in the shortest amount of time. That's what a soulmate does. Boom! Boom! Okay, so there's my theory on soulmates in a nutshell. In a nutshell. So when it comes to, that being said, when it comes to the North Node, you really want to keep your eyes open because these type of relationships, when they're being uh, uh, strongly aspected by one of the personal planets, and again, let me give you the rundown of the personal planets in case you forgot. That's the Sun, that's the Moon, that's Mercury, that's Venus, and that is Mars. And then sometimes the more outside planets, um, so Pluto, Saturn, Nept I don't even really look at Neptune that much, or Uranus is another planet that I'll look out to, but Neptune not so much. But when you start to see these, um, the North Node aspecting those types of things, especially the personal planets, that's when we start to see this growth, this evolution that you may not feel initially right away, but it's that it'll reveal itself over time and the type of lessons it is that you learn. And the way to look at what type of lessons you're going to learn within that relationship is to look at what planet is aspecting the north node what house it rules so let's say you have Mars aspecting your north node Mars rules Scorpio within your chart within your natal chart and Scorpio rules your third house of communication so what you'll see is that when the when Mars is squaring the north node what you'll notice is that you might have a, uh, a relationship that triggers your ability to effectively communicate and to be patient and understanding with that person. So that is the lesson that that relationship, one of the lessons that that relationship is probably going to reveal to you. Why is that? Well, that's because the planet that rules your third house of communication is aspecting the north node, causing that, number one, that connection, but it's revealing to you the lesson of that, which is the lessons that come from the third house. 
let's say it's the 12th house and it's your subconscious fears and your insecurities those things will be highlighted when they're being aspected by the when the planet that rules that house is being aspected by the north node so these are things that we'll look towards within the sinistry chart basically if you look at the chart and you put all the pieces together it will reveal to you the story so you'll better understand what type of relationship dynamic it's going to bring into your life and again every relationship is totally different but with the north node that relationship for sure is always connected to karma when it's being aspected by some of the personal planets. So you'll also see that the North Node is being aspected because it's connected to karma to these past life issues that kind of surface up. So this brings in a person that you may have had a connection with in past lives and you may have already felt it because when you met them, you remember them. You are drawn to them in some way, shape or form and your relationship now is here to serve a person purpose but you want to make sure that you're striving for your highest and greatest good you have to keep in mind that when the north node is being aspected this is where you are drawn to go this is where you are destined to go that also simultaneously the south node is being aspected and this is where it is that you're coming from so it's very easy for you to fall back into old patterns based upon past life issues that resurface so you want to make sure that you're always grounded within that relationship and that you're looking towards the strengths and the weaknesses of that relationship and also within yourself so you're not taking steps back when it comes to your own progression here on earth. Moving on to my next aspect, and this one is one of my favorites, and it is the connection of Venus and Neptune within the chart. Now, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm just going to drift off on a cloud when I'm talking about this one, simply because that is what Venus-Neptune aspects do within a sinistry chart. It's like a dream. Really, it is a dream. But just because it feels like a dream doesn't mean that it's actually you know, a soulmate relationship or a twin flame relationship or true love. It just feels like it is. And if it feels like it is, then that's okay, right? <laughs> no, honestly, Venus uh, rules relationships, beauty, and aesthetic, and Neptune rules illusion and fantasy, and I hear astrologers all the time talking about wah, wah, wah. Neptune and Venus are being aspected. This isn't true love. It just feels like it. Why don't you shut your mouth? No, I'm just kidding. That was really rude. But no, seriously, not everything has to be so set in stone with like, and that is so Saturn, Saturnian, Saturnian. That is so Saturn of you to kind of bring us all down to reality, back down to reality when we see these like aspects with Venus and Neptune. The point of Neptune is to bring in beauty and, and magic into your life. If you don't have beauty and magic in your life and in your relationship, it's just going to feel so dull and monotonous and there's nothing wrong with that if that's really what it is that you want but it is nice to kind of you know feel and experience this essence of true love and romance when it comes to a, a deeper connection with your soulmate or your twin flame there's nothing wrong with that especially when the chart itself is being aspected by other things that ground it so you're not just completely disillusioned for that venus trine neptune within the chart is one of the most stunning aspects people feel it almost right away and it really is like this romance even if that person is not naturally a romantic person for whatever reason maybe mercury is squared within their chart or saturn squared within their chart whatever the case is even if they're not normally a naturally romantic person there's something about that person in that relationship that just takes them to to the point where they just can't help themselves it's like they see that person and they see art they see color and there's nothing wrong with having that type of dynamic being introduced into your life especially when it comes to love so it's the trine aspect that it is that you want to look out for that the sex tile which is a little less energy when it comes a little less strong energy when it comes to that like ethereal type of vibe the venus and um neptune conjunction which means venus and neptune are sitting right on top of each other um so the the energies of those two planets merge really really well and beautifully together and that reveals itself in the chart the thing that you want that you want to look out for is when venus squares neptune i have this in my personal chart and sometimes this is when you get so caught in your vibe and the illusion of love and romance and it's just hard for you to kind of see things for what it is and see things for the reality which can later on invite in disappointment and frustration and then a broken heart but even then 
even still it is still kind of like nice to kind of drift off in a cloud when you see that and you definitely want to look to see um, other aspects within the chart in order to ground and cement the relationship I do want to say that if you have Venus square Neptune within the synastry chart this is not dooming the relationship you just want to make sure that you are effectively communicating expectations with the partner and you should be fine um, and just constantly keep on checking in with that person to not constantly but you want to check in with that person to make sure that you guys both have the same um, expectations for the relationship and direction for the relationship because when the the Neptune squares Venus or Venus squares Neptune it's not a person who is intentionally trying to disillusion the other person they just like it's just things get lost in translation you like interpret things like uh, confused it's like mercury being retrograde Venus rules relationships and love beauty attraction the other thing that I've seen is um when Venus squares Neptune it's like you can't you don't see someone for who they are which isn't necessarily a bad thing let's say everyone else looks at this person this person that you've fallen madly in love with and they're like yo he is a troll <laughs> why are you in love with him he is literally a troll it's because you see more than just the external you see the internal you see the soul you see the spirit you see where he is on an energetic level and that's what it is that you're falling in love with so don't feel bad if you have a negative aspect within your chart. You guys know I say this time and time and time and time and time and time and time again that there is no such thing as a negative thing within any chart. It's all about working with the energies and allowing them to work with you and you knowing how to work with them in order for you to make your magic and for you to do your thing. And that's what this this um, YouTube video and my YouTube channel will teach you if you are subscribed. So hashtag subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and then also turn on your notifications so that as soon as I post up a video you receive that notification immediately <laughs> my coffee has definitely kicked in let's see if I'm missing anything I think I pretty much got um mm -hmm. yeah the next one and this isn't my favorite <laughs> I was actually laughing about this this morning when I woke up because that's what I do I wake up and I think about astrology but moon and Pluto aspects now this is one of those other things that could really uh, create confusion for astrologers I don't care how long they've been studying astrology but um, it but definitely beginner astrologers uh, definitely people that are just re only just now like newbies to the astrology world they'll look at moon aspects to Pluto and they'll be like this is my soulmate and I have to be like no it's not it's just a really strong, <laughs> just a really strong emotional connection that can be really fucking intense. Why is this? Well, the moon represents our emotions and the way that we feel about things and our emotional well-being and our emotional fulfillment. So depending on where the moon falls within your chart is how you kind of feel things. Um, in a nutshell. So that's a really um, basic, simple way of describing that. And then Pluto rules death, transformation, but also intensity and connection on a soul level. So I can't talk about soulmates and twin flames without mentioning and referencing Pluto at some point in the entire video. But when Pluto is aspecting the moon in any way, shape, or form, we feel it. Oh my God, we feel it. Probably not as much when the moon is sextile. Sextiles just aren't strong enough. Everyone's like, oh my god, you have this beautiful sextile. It's just like, well, sextile energy is not strong enough. Bing, bang, boom. Just honestly, 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 I wouldn't lie to you, honestly. So when the moon is aspecting Pluto in a conjunction, oh my god, that's when you feel someone, you're just like, yo, you are my person. I vibe with you. Um, and it tends to be more constructive and beneficial and positive in the long haul, but we feel it right away. The same thing is with the opposite, well, the same thing is true with the trine. The opposition we feel, but over time, the opposition can create uh, emotional chaos over time. So you really want to be careful with how you handle that person, how you communicate with that person, and how you take care of them within that relationship because if you trigger a moon opposition Pluto person when you have that within your chart that person can really kind of go off meaning like they just emotionally like derail this is when we start to see like you know just uh, and it it really also depends on that person's natal chart because everyone is different with how they express emotions 
but it can really derail a person emotionally if there is um, something wrong within the relationship dynamic or something happens to the relationship. So this is when that person, I've seen this happen a lot. If uh, their partner, their marriage partner, or their soulmate or the twin flame steps on a nail in China and they're, they're in New York, they feel it on an emotional level. They're just like, ooh, I feel bad today. Like there's that, that connection. So the, the emotional connection between those two people is very, very strong, especially when we factor in the vertex points and other things, So um, including the sun and moon conjunction. So that's something to look out for. And then another thing that it is that you wanna look out for is moon square Pluto. Yes, this can create obsession and intensity, especially with Venus um, aspecting Pluto within the chart. But, um, yeah, because Venus square Pluto just is like a uh, fatal attraction always. Most often than not, you just feel like you're just like, God, he's so freaking good looking. And then you fall, <laughs> you fall in love with him and then you're like, why can't I stop thinking about him? Oh my God, I'm obsessed. And I'm like, yeah, girl, you crazy. Because Venus is <laughs> Pluto within your chart. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And uh, yeah, handle this with kid gloves because if this relationship breaks up, you on your own. But yeah, <laughs> moon squaring Pluto is a recipe for uh, something that we want to look out for because it can really uh, go from, swing from one end of the totem to, or not the totem, but swing from one end of the spectrum to the other side of the spectrum, just keep on going back, especially depending if, oh my God, if that person doesn't have a healthy placement of their moon in, within their chart, you could have some serious, like, like blind, obsessed, stalker type <laughs> connections which you want to look out for no one has time for that i don't you don't none of us does anyone have time for that no one has time for that no one rose their hand raise their hand all right you guys so i'm pretty sure that that was five i know someone's going to correct me if i am missing one or if i did too many but yeah those are the five things that it is that i look out for i don't feel like i'm missing anything i love talking about relationships and love when it comes to astrology so if you would like to see more videos about that topic um definitely leave me a comment so i can feel encouraged i'll do what it is that you guys want me to talk about um especially now i'm on this like youtube kick right now i'm just loving talking to you guys and on this platform and in this way so if again if you want to see more videos about love relationships and dynamics i'm more than happy to do them for you if you need to work with me the links for that will be down below but until then thank you so much for sharing this video thank you so much for your comments and thank you so much for wa watching i'll see you in my next video bye